Welcome back. The first two videos on Piaget's cognitive theory explain to you the process and stages of cognitive development. This video is all to understand the principles and strategies of school counseling through the lens of Piaget's cognitive theoretical framework. At the end of this video, you will be able to recognize the components and strategies involved in counseling, imply Piaget's cognitive framework into the assessment, case conceptualization, and intervention planning in counseling. Many research studies have shown the possibilities in promoting holistic development through carefully designed educational experiences with an incorporated element of stimulating state change. The successful experiences have had several components, for example, a significant role-taking experience, a reflection of opportunities, a balanced challenge and support, and a sense of sense continuity. The role of a school counselor can be significant in contributing to these successful stage changes. With Piaget's cognitive theory in mind, and with the realization of the thought process of children that varies from one stage to the other stage of the lifespan, certain components are to be considered while formulating a school counseling program. They are, the first one is role taking. It is about placing an individual in a new situation or challenging set, which requires an extended support of the use of slightly higher level skills and processing than currently employed. The role taking has to be realistic and compelling rather than stimulated or routine. The second component is a reflection. The role taking experiences are then taken up for reflection to provide the individual with an opportunity to examine the feelings related to the experience and develop different perspectives. The third component is balance. It is an essential component concerning challenge and support. The state of disequilibrium is necessary for growth, but it is not without pain or loss. Individuals facing challenges will need personal support. So constant monitoring and adjusting the balance of challenge and support provided to students is essential to enable the students to continue to move forward by embracing educational challenges and environmental challenge without being overwhelmed by them. The last component is continuity. Finally, an intervention designed to promote the developmental needs to include continuity. The component of continuity involves long-term commitment for about six months to a year, including deliberate and sustained efforts for effective development. As any developmental change will take time, brief interventions are not adequate. Such interventions may be suitable for sharing some information or bringing an awareness. With a thorough understanding of the Piaget's cognitive theory, certain specific strategies and concepts could be implied towards the process of counseling school children. Moreover, creating the specific environment is of utmost importance in counseling. The strategies thus derived are four. The first one is dilemma discussions. Second is plus one reasoning. And then creation of just communities and then the fourth one is person to environment fit. Let us see each in detail. The first strategy, dilemma discussion. This technique involves a presentation of open-ended dilemmas for discussion and analysis. The discussion is facilitated by the counselor or the educator. The goal of a discussion is to help the students to think elaborately and state their reasoning about decisions. When it is done in a group, the process provides them with an opportunity to hear the reasoning and ideas of others. Counselors do not involve in teaching or providing answers, but instead focus on analyzing or clarifying the levels of reasoning. The second strategy is plus one reasoning. Of course, it is a significant factor in dilemma discussion. Within developmental domains, individuals have a typical stage of development indicating their common method of processing experience. While students can understand all of the levels of reasoning below their own, they usually comprehend only one stage above. The slightly increased complexity of reasoning of one stage above is generally proactive 
or fascinating to students. More than one level can be overwhelming and will not be beneficial. Encouraging students to listen to reasoning one level up or above stimulates the thought process and in turn promote development. Dilemma discussion which relates to the ideas of plus one reasoning provides an opening for secondary role and disequilibrium. Next is creation of just communities. This is mainly to foster moral development and moral action. The concept of the just community involves the creation of a total environment. Particularly, two significant ideas seem to pervade in most applications or adaptations of the just community. The first idea is that direct and shared democracy. And the second idea is participation by all members of the community based on equal rights and responsibilities. The fourth strategy is person to environment fit. The concept of person to environment fit is a more broadly based component in promoting development. To facilitate development, educators and counselors need to provide activities that will be appropriate with the developmental level of the student and at the same time include constructive challenging activities. And now let us look about how these strategies or the components through the lens of Piaget's theory imply to the counselors. The counselors need to have a solid grip over the basics of cognitive development theory and concepts of growth span of human development. This background knowledge is important for the counselor as an understanding of stage specific characteristics will help them better in making assessments and intervention planning. Also, the counselor should be able to evaluate self and understand their significant developmental issues as their own experiences and that may have a significant impact on counseling. Counselors are recommended to review the student's developmental stages to discover the nature of the specific difficulty. Counselors also need to base their assessment and case conceptualization on a developmental perspective. The counselors here should seek answers for the domain-specific questions before initiating any school counseling program. And the domain-specific questions are now will be explained to you in detail. Let us look into the cognitive domain question. The question is that whether the student has developed the base for the component that needs to be addressed. If there is an answer no for this question, then the counseling intervention which attempts a client to make generalizations based on a collection of past experiences may be ineffective. And in the ethical domain. What is the motivation behind the student's behavior should be the question that is asked. The response to this question may provide very helpful guidelines to determine the most appropriate intervention. And in the interpersonal domain, the question to be asked is the, what is the receptiveness level this student to others' perspective? If there is less receptiveness, asking that student to tell you how others in a conflict feel will be difficult or impossible. The I don't know statement in such cases does not mean resistance. Then in the conceptual domain, the question to be posed is, what is the base structure level of the student? Those at higher stages will feel motivated to deal with greater levels of ambiguity and in fact may become frustrated by the imposition of too much structure. On the other hand, students at lower stages of development in this domain may need more information and direction. Aside from assessment and case conceptualization issues in many settings, counselors will also need to carefully examine the traditional practice on individual counseling. Available resources, cultural backgrounds of clients and the needs and norms of their setting must be given serious consideration. Beyond these environmental issues, participation in a group or an outreach program might also contribute to a much more appropriate direction to promote student development. For certain students, group interventions often provide a more authentic social context and issues than individual counseling. The counselor's role in such group intervention is more of a facilitator or agent of change rather than an individual therapist. School counselor service delivery should include collaboration with teachers and administrators in designing school curriculum, collaboration with parents and coordinated activities 
for individual counseling and group counseling. Now let us see about the two major tasks of school counselors. In between the process of internalizing the student needs and formulating a school counseling program, the counselor should see to that they accomplish